So one of the most important vessels that's generated in the nervous system and then in the circulatory system is this hypothalamic hypophyseal portal system. Okay, it's very important regarding transfer of hormones at a very high concentration to the target region, right? So first, before we even focus on this too much, I want you to be able to break this up. So this is involving which two organs? We're looking at the hypothalamus and the hypophyseal. Hypophyseal is referring to the pituitary, okay? So if I were to draw the hypothalamus right here. So this is the hypothalamus. And then here, in this structure called the infundibulum, you have the pituitary glands. The anterior and the posterior pituitary glands. So this is the pituitary glands. So here we're going to focus on the anterior pituitary because the hypothalamic hypophyseal uh, portal system is relative to this, right? So this is a capillary network, a fenestrated capillary network that allows for the transfer of hormones that are secreted by the hypothalamus to maintain its high concentration when it enters the anterior pituitary. Okay, so it's this little portal system where these capillaries allow for high concentration of hypothalamic hormones enter the anterior pituitary system in order to bind to these trophic cells and cause a very high response. So the reason for this is if this, for example, this hypothalamic hypophyseal portal system was not created, so you did not have this, what was the definition of an endocrine organ? Endocrine organ is where they secrete hormones directly into the blood. They are ductless, right? So they are not visually stored. So if this system was not created, what would happen is the chemicals that were generated, for example, let's look at corticotropin releasing hormone, CRH. This is the hormone responsible for the eventual release of cortisol. This, if it goes into the bloodstream, what happens to this CRH when it, the main target of CRH is the anterior pituitary? What happens is that you have this dispersion because of the blood, and so the concentration of this high concentration of CRH becomes very dilute, right? And so by the time it reaches the anterior pituitary system, when leading to the corticotropic cells to release ACTH, right? So the whole goal of this is to secrete ACTH, and I'm sure you all have learned this, and then go into the adrenal cortex, to secrete cortisol, right? So this is the whole, really, gist of the pattern, right? But if, it's, if this hypothalamic hypophyseal portal system was not created, you have this immense dispersion. So the dilution of this hormone is taking place, right? And so that becomes bad, because you don't have that specific response of that high concentration of anterior pituitary hormone to be released, which can lead to hyposecretion of cortisol in the long run. Right. So if you think about it, think about it like in coffee. So if I want to drink a cup of coffee and I want to have the caffeine to have the highest concentration. Right. If I dilute it in water, right, what happens to that concentration of that caffeine that I wanted? It goes down. Right. So what do you have to do in order to have more of that caffeine? You have to drink more. Right. So in order to have that response from the caffeine, right, this leads to these certain kinds of problems. Right. So. Here, this is just the whole main general gist of the hypothalamic hypophyseal portal system where this capillary allows for a direct connection of the hypothalamus to the anterior pituitary in order so whenever the hormones of the hypothalamus are secreted, this generates the highest response possible. And so now you're wondering, okay, well, it still gets diluted out. Well, because the target cell from the anterior pituitary is already at such releasing at such high concentration, by the time it reaches the target cell, it still generates a, a sufficient response. Okay? And so the way the endocrine system works in this case is based off of the different signaling of the hormones, right? So and you have two types of hormones that are usually released from the anterior pituitary here that I want you to focus on. This is called Stimulatory hormones, which stimulate the release of certain um, target organs. So for example, if we look at TSH that we learned 
from the anterior pituitary that is secreted. This goes to the thyroid to re secrete its thyroid hormone, the T3, T4, right? So you have stimulating hormones. And also, you have another type of hormone. You have inhibiting hormones. So both of them are constantly being secreted. So an example of inhibiting hormone is dopamine. Dopamine is used to inhibit prolactin. This. So if you ever see, for example, arrows versus this sign, this is showing an inhibitor, prolactin. And prolactin, we remember that it was responsible for the production of milk. So a great example of this for treatment is um, patients that, for example, have any kind of pituitary tumor, whether it's involving the prolactin. Prolactin itself is an inhibitor of the FSH and LH hormones. These hormones are responsible for fertility, fertility and, and hormones for secondary sex characteristics like, like testosterone. Perfect example of this is one of my cousins. She had this pituitary tumor that causes the prolactin, prolactin secretion to be elevated, right? So what happened was she was not able to menstruate anymore. So her fertility levels went down because this high level of prolactin led to a decreased level of FSH and LH, which now the gametes were not able to form. So if I were to ask you a question, you know, what did the doctor prescribe? They called me, you know, from a different country. They asked me, what do you think? I explained this nice pathway. So I told them the doctor will probably prescribe some kind of analog, right? So an analog that activates dopamine secretion. So why, why, why did I make that suggestion? Well, based off of this little brief mechanism. So dopamine is an inhibitor of prolactin and prolactin is an inhibitor of FSH. If prolactin, if dopamine levels increase, what happens to prolactin? This becomes obsolete, or it has, becomes very low concentration. So in the end, dopamine can actually trigger increased FSH and LH, so follicular stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone, which will lead to the re-regularity of the menstrual cycle. And so after this suggestion, they went to the doctor, the doctor said the same exact um, prescription, and now, She's menstruating perfectly.